The tragedy you're about to hear is regarded as one of the deadliest animal attacks in history and led to the greatest number of human fatalities by crocodiles ever recorded in a single event. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the deadliest crocodile attack in history. Welcome to Final Affliction. The Ramri Island Massacre is the terrifying true story of an entire Japanese army division being devoured overnight by hordes of saltwater crocodiles in the swamps of Burma during World War II. Saltwater crocs can weigh over a ton and grow to more than 7 meters in length. Their biting grip is one of the strongest of any land animal, and they are known to aggressively defend their territory, even against humans that dare venture too close. It was early 1945 and the Second World War had pushed the Axis forces to the edge of surrender in the Pacific War. In the dense mangrove forests of the coast of Burma, the 54th Division of the Japanese Army had been forced to hide in retreat as the British military marched forward to capture the island. The area was pivotal for the Allied forces to control as it provided strategic advantage for setting up an airbase and conducting bombing missions in Malaysia and the wider Southeast Asia. The division was made up of 1,000 Japanese soldiers who found themselves outgunned and outnumbered. The area they controlled shrank smaller by the passing day as British foot soldiers stomped forward with full might, capturing or killing any Japanese soldier that resisted. Pushed further back along the coast, the Japanese troops were now in a deadly predicament. Between the British troops and the sea, the only place to run or hide was through the dense mangrove swamps of the Ramri Island. The battle continued for several weeks, and the Japanese troops had been feeding on small animals in the mangrove forest to keep themselves alive. Unbeknownst to them, the animals they were hunting were the primary prey of the giant saltwater crocodiles that heavily infested the dense swamp. Hundreds of these giant reptiles inhabited the swamp water and would resurface only to hunt and feed. Saltwater crocodiles are cold-blooded animals that go into periods of deep sleep in the wetlands, hiding in the water awaiting prey to come closer near the swamp shore. But now several weeks had passed and the wild boars, fish, and crustaceans that constituted the crocodile's diet had been killed for food by the Japanese soldiers. It was the perfect storm. The crocodiles had started to go hungry, and hundreds of them now started to surface from beneath the swamp water looking for food. They would swim closer to the shore, peering their eyes above the water to see if any animal had walked close enough to attack. On one fateful day, on February 19, 1945, one of the soldiers was walking through the mangrove forest behind his platoon. He was entrusted with the responsibility of carrying an injured soldier on his back behind the team. However, walking for miles with his teammate on his shoulders had taken a toll on his body, and he had to slow down. The platoon reached the wetlands of the mangrove swamp, and it was decided that the only way forward was straight through the dense, muddy swamp. The soldier was cold, tired, and out of breath. Tried hard as he did, he could not keep pace with the rest of his team. The distance between him and his platoon started to grow, but the other soldiers had become too jaded to care. The water had further slowed him down until all he heard from his platoon was faint chattering in the distance. It soon fell silent in the dense Burmese forest, and he felt too exhausted to continue. But they were in the middle of the water, and stopping was not an option. He had to catch up to the team quickly because the only chance of staying alive in the jungle war zone was safety in numbers. But the weight of the wounded soldier on his back and his slow steps in dense muddy swamp water made it difficult for him to regroup with his team. He then heard an eerie grunt behind him and felt the uneasy sensation that he was being watched. He realized how vulnerable he was with his hands carrying his wounded teammate and his legs stuck in the slow, thick mud of the swamp. He thought he was being chased by enemy soldiers or was the target of a British sniper close by. But not in his wildest dreams could he have known that the real danger lurked right beside his muddied feet. Suddenly and without any other warning but the muffled grunt he had heard before, a 20-foot saltwater crocodile charged at him in the swamp, terrifying the soldier out of his senses. The monster reptile's gaping mouth with over 60 razor-sharp teeth more than 4 inches in length lunged at the soldier and caught his wounded teammate firmly in its tight grip. The soldier screamed at the top of his lungs and called for help from his team. 
he realized he could either save himself or let both die, and decided to run as fast as he could to safety. Stuck in the thick mud and frightened into inaction, he realized he was caught in the crocodile's turf. He didn't have the time to look back, nor the heart to watch his friend get torn to pieces alive as he screamed in agony. The attack had woken up dozens of more hungry crocodiles in the water, who gathered in a frenzy to feast on the man. He was dragged beneath the water, splashing and fighting for his life, but he was no match for the monster crocodiles as they shred him to pieces. The soldier could do nothing but watch in horror and keep walking to avoid the same fate. However, the body of the injured soldier was only a small meal that momentarily satiated the week-long hungry crocodiles. They had now tasted blood and wanted more. The soldier realized he was next as he noticed commotion in the water in front of him. More crocodiles started surfacing with their eyes on the soldier as their next prey. He soon felt a massive sharp bite on his leg beneath the water. The crocodile tore into his flesh, burying its sharp teeth deep into his thigh. It started to spin in the water with the soldier firm in its grip. He screamed in terror and shouted for help, before being drowned and devoured by the beasts. By now the team ahead had heard the screams, and realized that something was wrong. They thought it was an ambush by the British military, but they were hopelessly unaware that the real enemy swam right beside their feet in the swamp water. They moved slowly back to find the two missing soldiers, but all they could find was a pool of reddened swamp and floating flesh. They could not understand what had just happened, and aimed their guns at the trees above fearing enemy snipers and traps. But soon after, dozens of saltwater crocodiles swam up closer to them beneath the water. The whirlpool of the water created by the charging crocodiles made it clear to them that it was too late. The twenty-foot-long hungry beasts charged at once at the men, ripping off limbs and heads with one bite. The frantic and aimless gunshots of the soldiers could do nothing to stop the attack except injure a few crocodiles back into the water. They were caught in crocodile land, hopelessly vulnerable and unable to move. It was a feeding frenzy for the crocodiles. They bit into the soldiers' torso and legs and dragged them into the water to be devoured. The number of crocodiles increased as more and more bodies piled up. It was a snowball effect in a cynical fashion. The more dead soldiers, the more crocodiles came to feed on them. The soldiers screamed in terror, watching their colleagues get eaten alive but could do nothing except run. The commotion in the water had awoken hundreds of crocodiles in the ten mile swamp that gathered to feast on the soldiers trapped in the dense swamp. Over a period of four days, more than 1,000 dead soldiers littered the water. Their half-eaten bodies and pieces of flesh reddened the mangrove swamp and told the horrifying tale of an entire military division being torn to shreds by monster crocodiles. The next morning, vultures dived from the sky to scavenge the leftover human flesh. The incident remains engraved in history as the most devastatingly gruesome animal attack ever recorded, and left yet another bloody mark on the history of the Second World War. Out of the 1,000 soldiers from the 54th Division that went into the swamps, only 20 made it out alive. The stories they recounted painted a grim picture of what transpired on that fateful day, and the gore they witnessed in the vicious attack left them with more post-traumatic stress than anything they had gone through during the war, their friends being torn apart all around them, all meeting their horrifying final affliction.